Adi Ramallah Ladi Jolie, and I'm a certified personal nutritionist and a weight loss expert. Um, what a lot of people don't know about me is that I'm also a lawyer, a qualified lawyer, but I don't practice. Along the line, I decided to lose weight for myself, for my health, and then um, I didn't want to do things the same old way. I wanted to do it differently because in the past I would lose weight and then gain it back almost immediately, lose weight again. I was, you name all the fad diets, I had done pretty much every single thing. But this time I decided to focus on good health whilst losing the weight and also focus on weight maintenance. And I did this via balance, what I call balance is the 80-20 rule. So 80% of the time I eat as healthy as possible, 20% of the time I allow myself to indulge. And I've been able to lose um, approximately 40 kilos and I've been down, rather I am down by four dress sizes and I've maintained this size for the past five years. Um, so based on my experience with my weight loss, I started helping other people for free and they started calling me Coach Dams and they would say, oh, we're not eating anything until we ask Dams. And it all, it all started like a joke. So I decided to call the company Ask Dams. I didn't know that, you know, we're gonna go this far. But yeah, that's what started the whole, the whole journey. And all the ladies on the group, they lost weight. A lot of them who had infertility issues conceived. My sister-in-law, after 10 years, she lost about 20 kilos. She had, had like three IVFs. The fourth one, after she had lost 20 kilos, she, had, she, had, she gave birth to twins after that. So yeah, it's been an amazing journey so far. And because of all the amazing testimonies I've been, yeah, I'm still in the game. <laughs> At the point where I was overweight, I was actually really, really confident still um, but my major issue was that I couldn't find clothes that would fit me readily available in the store and I remember being in school in England and I would always have to buy the bigger sizes and I, they still may not even fit so I find myself shopping at the plus size stores or I would just stick to you know my Nigerian designers or tailors uh, whatever you choose to call it um, because that way, I mean, it's made to fit, it's tailor-made. But the state of my mind, actually, I was very, very confident. Like, I would walk into a room and I would feel like I owned the entire universe in the room. And so, for me, weight loss was not because I felt, you know, I had an inferiority complex. No, I did it mainly for health reasons. Yes, I wanted to fit into clothes, but I actually did it mainly for health reasons. Because I always talk about something called gastroesophageal reflux disorder, which is a severe form of hyperacidity. So I developed hyperacidity from a very, very unhealthy lifestyle. I used to drink like four or five bottles of soda every single day. I, I pretty much wouldn't eat a meal or a snack without a drink in my hand. And it had to be a fizzy drink with loads of sugar in it. So being overweight, I was uncomfortable. You know, a constant heartburn. Sometimes I would feel like I was having like a mild heart attack. And at some point in time, I even thought I had cancer. Then I had three endoscopies done at three different hospitals, two in Lagos, one in America. And the last doctor said to me, um, we can't actually figure out the cause of how you're feeling. Or, or, or we can't try to, they put me on medication and it wasn't working. And the doctor said, we can't, I, he really didn't know what to do. But he said something to me that really struck a chord. He said to me, do you know that being overweight is a major cause um, for GERD, that's gastroesophageal reflux disorder and that you know, losing some weight will really, really go a long way. And I was like, really? And he said, yes, the more weight you lose, the better you would feel with, um, you know, with the GERD symptoms, that the less symptoms I would have rather. And so yeah, that's how the journey started. And then from um, feeling a lot better, much healthier and all that, then I started fitting into the clothes and people started giving the compliments. And then I got into weight loss coaching, and I'm still, but I'm still the same old me on the inside. Nothing has changed. The reason why a lot of women want to lose weight, um, the truth of the matter is, I I'll be honest, the society we live in, you hear things like, ah, you're walking on the road, people will shout, maybe something like, oh, boy. I remember being age 17 and I had to, a, a nanny of ours had to come and get me from my friend's house and I was walking on the road and as a very young child, I had like a lot of, I mean, not very young, almost a, an adult, but. I remember a group of people, guys to be precise, actually shouting, Orobo, Orobo, see Orobo. And I was just, I mean, it was a very, that was the only, that was one time in my life where I thought to myself, I actually wish the fat could vanish in a heartbeat. So a lot of women want to do it for society. And at that point in time, 
you know, I wanted to quickly do something to lose weight because I felt weird about myself, but that didn't last. So external motivation doesn't really last. It's something that you have to really want to do for yourself. You want to lose weight and maintain it. It's something that has to be internally sparked. Um, so a lot of women want to lose weight for vanity reasons. A lot of women want to lose weight for health reasons. A lot of women want to lose weight for fertility reasons. Cause the truth of the matter is being um, overweight um, doesn't help a lot of women that have things like PCOS with con when it comes to fertility and conception. And so we found out that in the course of our day-to-day -day activities, a lot of women who have lost weight have actually found it a lot easier to conceive. And so a lot of women are doing it these days for fertility reasons, vanity aside, health reasons. Yeah. The relationship between weight and self-esteem, from my perspective, I think everyone should love themselves at whatever size they're at. Because a lot of people think that the solution to their happiness is losing you know, a few kilos, dropping a few dress sizes. Some people think that they're, be they're depressed because of their weight. And then they realize that even after losing the weight, they, they still have underlying problems, you know, emotional issues that weight loss cannot solve. And so it's something one has to, you know, just be very confident in themselves. It's easy to just talk the talk or not walk the walk, but it's something that one is supposed to build up with time as time goes by. And so you have to ask yourself, what is your why? Why? Why do you want to um, lose the weight? If really, for some people, being overweight actually makes them uncomfortable and knocks their self-esteem down. If you're one of those, please, for all, for, by all means, do it for vanity pur purposes. But if you're one of those that you know that maybe somebody has told you you're fat or your husband has told, some people actually, their marriages, they're having like very stressful marriages. And they believe that the reason they're having stressful marriages is because they're overweight. And then they lose the weight and they realize that, no, it wasn't because they were overweight, it's just because the man is how he is or she is how she is. And you know, there are roots, underlying root um, issues that need, that need to be treated. Um, so the relationship between being overweight and self-esteem, once again, heavily depends on the individual. But I always say this, love yourself enough to live a healthy lifestyle, most importantly, that's what counts. Um, top tips for losing weight that worked for me. Um, you know, having that 80-20 rule in mind, all that, you can't eat this, you can't eat this, you can't eat this. I started getting rid of all those things. I, st I stopped seeing good food and bad food. I started seeing this as you eat more of the good food because you want to nourish your body, because you are what you eat, because what you eat on the inside is what's gonna reflect on the outside. I started seeing food as what you put in is what you get out, as opposed to just weight alone. And so I would say, that helped me having balance in mind. You know, I mentioned the 80-20 rule earlier on. Two, learning how to control my cravings really, really helped me. Because what a lot of people don't realize is that sugar is even more addictive than cocaine is. So while cocaine would light up one or two parts of the brain, sugar would light up about 22 different parts of the brain. And so breaking a sugar addiction is very, one of, it's one of the hardest things to do. Keeping a food journal. You know, a lot of us, you hear things like, oh, I don't know why I'm not losing weight, I don't know why I'm gaining weight, you know, I don't even eat much, I just eat little bits and pieces. But however, these things add up. There's some things that I call small but mighty. And I'll give two examples. Unhealthy, let's move it to the pastry. So let's say a typical sausage roll can be as high or even higher than 400 calories. That's unhealthy, people brand it as unhealthy. However, you may have a granola bar, which is supposed to be healthy, that has as much calories as that sausage roll has. And then just because you've abandoned the sausage roll and you are eating the granola bars, which may look pretty small because they can be quite small, maybe this size, snacking on that and other things throughout the course of the day, just because you're focusing on eating healthy alone is not enough to make you lose the weight. Weight loss is calories in versus calories out, whether or not you like it. So even if you're focusing on your health, you still have to consider the quantity of your calories. So quality and quantity matters when it comes to weight loss. Is there something like a perfect meal? There's actually nothing like a perfect meal. But what I would advise people in general is that they try to incorporate as much vegetables as they can into almost every meal that they're eating, as much as possible, whenever they can remember to, if they have to remember, whether raw or cooked. So for example, some people say, well, I don't like this. I don't feel like, sometimes I don't feel like I don't like it, but 
I think about the effect it could have on my health. And so sometimes I force myself to eat, you know, some carrots, some cucumber, some garden eggs. I don't wake up in the morning and think, oh my God, I just can't wait to eat some cucumbers. Oh my God, they taste so yummy. No, I don't think that, you get what I mean? But I still know that I need to incorporate this thing into my diet. I know that I love my white rice with my mind, body, and soul. But I know that as a Weight Watcher, it, you know, white rice digests really, really fast. And so if I want to eat the white rice, I want to eat my cake and have it, I need to have some vegetables on the side. So maybe some effort can go on the side or some sort of steamed vegetables. Even in the morning, throw in a, a few greens into your smoothie. Probably it would, the other fruits there will mask, mask the taste of the greens. So whichever way, just find a way to sneak incorporate vegetables into your diet. Make sure you're getting good sources of carbohydrates, which includes your oat, your fada rice, your brown rice, your white rice, your yam, your sweet potatoes, Irish potatoes, and the list goes on. Make sure you're getting enough proteins, proteins in whatever form, chicken, beef, turkey, shrimp, whatever you like, um, eggs. Uh, make sure you're getting good sources of healthy fats. A lot of people think that fat is bad. No, fat is not bad. There's good sources of fat and there's bad sources of fat. So your good sources of fats would include things like avocados, coconut, coconut oil, your almond, your pistachio nuts, your macadamia nuts. Yeah, and the list goes on. So try to make sure that you're getting every single food group every single day. Both your macro food nutrients and your micro food nutrients. The macro food nutrients are the ones that you need in large quantities. So your proteins, your carbohydrates, and your um, fats and oil. And the micro food nutrients are the smaller vitamins and minerals like vitamin A, B, C, D, E, K, iron, potassium, magnesium, E, T, T. Yeah, so make sure you're getting everything as much as possible every day. That's a perfect day. That's a perfect plate in 24 hours. To enjoy more of this our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.